Let's have a look. He comes, here he comes. Oi, oi. Oi, oi. How, How are we, son? mate? What's happening? Yeah, good, mate. How are you? Yeah, not too bad, mate. Can't complain, can't complain. Been a while, mate, since I've seen you. I know, mate. This is new to me, this live thing. <laughs> it's all the rage, mate. It's all the rage. <laughs> Rip me heart out, mate. But um, as I say, as you say, mate, we've got to just stay indoors, keep our nut down, wait for it to uh, wait for it all to move forward. But this is the thing I'm sort of saying to people is that we've got to keep focusing on the future. I mean, at the minute we can start every day. You're getting up, you're reading about this coronavirus, you're, you're reading about the problems, we're worrying about it, you know what could go wrong in the future. Where you know people can start getting a big, we could get a real big um, problem with depression and anxiety like this. You know when, when it. When, it all, when we all come out the other end in four or six weeks' time or whatever, and people will let out, people have anxiety about going out because their brain's been so used to staying in and doing this routine that now it becomes the norm. So when they well, go have... out with the anxiety when we first stayed in, that's gonna, it's going to flip itself. So people should be focusing on their goals, creating new visualisations, you know, and I think it's, there's a lot of goodness. Like, a lot of kids are spending time with their families now. Like, these kids are going to remember it, being mum and dad for, like, seven, eight weeks or whatever long it's going to be. Yeah. Um, you know... There will be some goodness out of it, you know. The plants are growing, the fucking birds are singing, the the coral reefs lit up. You know, it's um, it's there is a lot of good stuff going that's, on. Do you know what I mean? So, but that's you know, that's, just... the, that's the thing, though, Rob. Is is that people, you know, I hope that people don't get this uh, coronaphobia, whatever they're calling it. I mean, you know, life is about living. Life is about getting out and you know visiting family, visiting friends, and you know just going out. And the good thing is. You know, when, when, I mean, I love, I personally, I love Boris and I love what he's doing for the country. But when he allowed everyone to, you know, just to remain out and visit the parks and whatever, I mean, you know, I visited a few parks and it was lovely. I mean, we've had amazing weather. And it's no coincidence that, you know, for this whole five, six weeks that we've been in, you know, 90% of the weather has been amazing. Yeah, you know, yeah. so it's... It, We can still connect, saying. yeah, we can still you know, connect through like this, like what we're doing now, we're still able It's um, good stuff. But um, everyone listening here, yeah, I'm Robert Ashley, the UK's number one unconscious mind therapist, me with my, my bro, Dean Gaffney, and um, so we're just going to have, have a little like, chat this evening, just running through some things, and we've been just having a little chat about the corona and stuff, and um, but I know... You know, Dean, you've been you've been a um, you've been about forever. Like as long as I remember, you've sort of grew up with you. Like I was at school when you was in Grange Hill. Do you know what I mean? I remember you you filmed once. You probably won't remember it. I don't know what the same was. You filmed the Grange. I think it was Grange Hill around the Bonamy Estate in Bermondsey. But I remember seeing you. That's why you know that was. Uh, must have been about fifteen. Yeah, that was, yeah, that was a TV show called Oasis. We did. Um, that was my first ever job. To be fair, how uh, was it? Um, I must have been thirteen, I remember fourteen. We was talk, I remember we, we were talking. I remember you ran there filming it in the Bonamy Estate under the under the shops at Millage, and um, yeah, yeah, we, yeah. we spoke to you. I said, "Okay, I mean, mate, we only young. I don't, really, I don't remember it, but I remember you you being there in the film and that." But and that wasn't Grange Hill. We always thought it was Grange Hill. It was Oasis, yeah. No, no, it was Oasis. That was before my my uh, my balls dropped, mate. That was before I had, a, I had a squeaky voice then when I was thirteen. Now I'm all husky, Barry yeah. White. <laughs> 
Ask you there, mate. Yeah. He wasn't going to jail. No, I'm getting confused. There. He wasn't going to jail. No. No, I didn't. I didn't want to correct you, mate, because this is your lie. Ah, okay, well, I've never you. been in Grange Hill. But what was that? What was that? The drugs one they done. We were, yeah, we just come say to primary no. school. Just, just say, say no. no. <laughs> yeah, Zamo. Zamo, Zamo. But you know, he was. But back then, the heroin was worse, wasn't it? That's what that. Say. Recently. Oh, Zamo. Yeah. Yeah, he came nah, to Stanford. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's mad. Good old days, mate. Then obviously you cracked him. How did you get into acting, though, bro? Did you, you did you go drama school or? No, I went to yeah, I went to Sylvia Young's, um, the infamous Sylvia Young that everyone oh, kind of yeah. you know went to. I wasn't lucky. I was in a yeah, great year. I had Daniela Westbrook. I had Emma Bunt and Baby Spice. You know, I had some good people in my in my oh, you know in that in that era of Sylvia Young. And the thing about oh, them, wow. it was kind of like if you got picked to do something like with EastEnders, I had to go back five times and you know audition it wasn't just you know you know you go for an audition and get the role like this took you know months to get to get the part of Robbie so you know I'm very grateful and it's changed my life oh blinding that's mental isn't it I, I went from EastEnders that was great I mean well everyone knows the well things. thing do you know what I mean that was the classic and then uh, and the thing is as well Rob is that when EastEnders when I joined EastEnders we were regularly getting 26 million people every episode which is just under half the country so you know that's a lot of people per ep watching you you know it's tv's changed you know now you've got netflix you've got the way the way people watch tv's change you know people are kind of you know watching catch up and watching it on their phones you know it's a completely different stage of being on a show like a soap opera and i'm very grateful that i went through that that fame at that time because it, you know working with some of the best people that have ever graced that show you know Ross Kemp who played Graham Barbara Windsor obviously played Peggy you know these are massive iconic characters and I was very grateful to have worked with them their quality man I, I could imagine what that must have been like you know what was that when you first met Babs like because we all grew up watching the old uh, carry on she's uh, she's an amazing person like she's 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 friendly with you know, the winners to the bosses. Um, she calls every from babes. She, um, she, so yeah, I miss Barbara, miss her a lot. Sorry, mate, the phone kept going. I had to put it on Do Not Disturb. Sorry, bruv. Yeah, what was you saying, mate? Sorry yeah, about so, that. So did you not hear any of that? No, I, I had to um, quickly turn the phone off, sorry. <laughs> Technology. Yeah, no, mate, I mean, someone like Barbara, she was she was friendly with, you know, you could, from the cleaners to the bosses. You know, she was she was friendly with everyone. And I remember she used to bring in the papers every day before everything was online. And she used to bring in the newspapers and me and Michael Greco were going to our room and uh, read them with her. And we were like, we used to call ourselves the Three Musketeers. And um, the, the lovely thing about Barbara, she was so... You know, I always ask questions about my life. The show, as big as EastEnders was at that period, it was such a good time to be part of the show. Blind in. I could imagine, I could only imagine. So what was one of your iconic moments growing up, son? Like, would have been, when you sort of come through it, what was one of your sort of favourite moments you remember, like, in, in them days, bro? I think, I think, I think, I mean, just, just uh, we, you know, we used to call it, like, the Brat Pack growing up. There was, like, myself, Martin McCutcheon, Sid Owen, Patsy Palmer. You know, we used to all go out, Michael Greco, and we used to all go out and kind of, like, party. Do you know what I mean? And just... Like, they were the good old days, you know, we used to go, I mean, really, you probably wouldn't get away with it now with things like 
you know, camera phones and whatever. We used to have a great time. We used to like party on. We used to go like seven, eight handed from the show. And people used to think, what's going on here? Do you know what I mean? All the, all the cast of EastEnders turn up. And uh, I was lucky enough to have friends in various other soaps. You know, I had um, obviously my good friend Ryan Thomas from Corrie, Jack Shepard. You know, I had people, Danny Miller from Emmerdale. So there was always people kind of from that era coming out. So it was kind of like a, like a soap free-for-all. Yeah. Uh, Matt, he's doing well, isn't he? I mean, I'll see his new show just come out. It's good. Yeah, he's doing well. Yeah. I'm so, so proud of him, man, because... The thing is, and, you know, we said this on the on the, the night that it aired, that I obviously know the boys, the brothers, very well, Ryan, Adam and Thomas, and obviously the dad. But I don't know all their family. You know, they're, they're, they're kind of taking yeah. me as their, like, a, another son. <clears throat> but it's now nice that everyone else can see what they're really like. Because if you weren't a fan of the Thomas brothers before you watched that show, if you watched that show, you have to be a fan of them. There's no... There's, there's nothing bad in the show. It's just no. everything's nice. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, nice no, quality, mate. It's quality. So how did you um? What's like the mindset behind acting? How does it work on set? I mean, what's what sort of mindset do you have to get into Dean to get through it? You know, to sort of get yourself focused, to sort of learn your lines. Is there, there's like a process you go through? Or? Well, I think everyone. The thing is, about an ongoing soap is that you don't. They're, they're, you're constantly, you've probably got between 12, between nine and 12 episodes in your head at one time. And, you know, one of your episodes could be that you've had a breakdown, but you're filming scenes out of sequence. So one day you're filming when you've had the breakdown, then you're filming after it, then you're filming before it, all in the same day. Oh, wow. So you've got to condition yourself. And the people that join a show like EastEnders, they kind of, like, I remember Christopher Timothy, great actor, amazing actor, done some amazing stuff in his career. But when he joined EastEnders, he was like, this is hard work because you've got to constantly, you've got to know where you are, what studio you're in. It's so fast-paced, EastEnders. I just don't know how it gets no, made. Finished, you know, yeah, before, cool, before the coronavirus, I mean, I don't know how any soap gets made because you are literally churning out probably... You know, 20 minutes material a day. You're kind of, you're doing 15 scenes a day. That's three teams. It's madness. It's nuts. That's crazy, isn't it? So in regards, to, like, but in regards to your question about how do you do the mind, the thing is, Rob, well, because it's an ongoing show, from day one, you have to, there's, there's no room for error with a show like East Dennis. There's no room. You can't suddenly turn up and go, I remember one day, it only happened to me once, and I was working with Pam, who played, obviously, the legendary Pat Butcher. And uh, in my own admission, you know, I'd gone out the night before, um, probably one of the only times I've ever done it, and I'll never do it again. And I just forgot my lines. Just wasn't very professional. And from then on, I'd never made that mistake again because you have to condition yourself. This is your job. They ask two things of you at EastEnders, or any soap, to be fair. One, just know your lines. It's not too much to ask. That's, that's your homework. And number two... Be on time. Again, not too much to ask. Do you, get, do you get the lines in advance to learn, or do you have to get the set and you have to do it when it's... No, you, get, you get the scripts about 10 days before, and then you just break it down. You get a schedule. You know, you'll get your schedule on the Friday before the Monday. So on Friday, you'll know what you're doing scenes for the following week. And then it's your, it's your job oh, to do your homework. Oh, gosh. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of prepping behind the scenes of each episode. So while you're filming this week, you're learning next week's stuff as well. Oh, and, and constant. And the thing is, you know, your, your character is on, that's why you have kind of producers that will come down and say to you, look, in last week's episode, you did this. Because otherwise you wouldn't know where you are. So, you know, the thing about EastEnders, you're, you're literally, they literally wipe your ass for you. There's people in different departments that literally get you to set. It's a very well-oiled machine. And all you have to do is be on time and know your lines. Not too much to ask. Uh, quality. Quality, mate. So what's happening for the future? And like what's, I said, the, Rob, what's the plans? The f well, mate, do you know what? It's, it's, the thing is, everything's down tools at the moment with, um, obviously, you know, with this coronavirus situation. So I think we're all in the same boat, you know, everyone all across the world. And, you know, everyone's very uncertain about where they're going. Lucky enough, I fulfilled a job um, just before this hit, um, which kind of paid me a very good wage that I can 
kind of not worry about it working for the rest of the year so I can kind of sit back but I realise that that's not for everyone obviously so I'm in a very fortunate position which I'm very grateful for and you know there was a show that we were meant to do in May which is a lovely little drama um, but obviously that's been postponed and who knows when that's going to start again so just fingers crossed that the, the start, world goes yeah. back to normal yeah mate that's so true I can't wait to get back out of there got me a retreat and I've been to me retreat, ain't, ain't you out in Spain? And, and I have to say, you know what, like, year, bro. Uh, mate, before I do, you don't know if you're going to get served good food, you don't know if you're going to get, you know, my, my daily <laughs> dose of butter, sugar, salt. I've lost you. But, can you hear me? There was, you know, you don't know what you're going to get when you go to retreat. But I have to say, and not just because I'm obviously talking to you now and you've become a friend, but you're very good at what you do. The retreats are very good. You know, I climbed a mountain for crying out loud. So, and that's all thanks to you because halfway up there, mate, I don't smoke. I very rarely drink, so I should be fit and healthy. But halfway up that mountain, I was done. <laughs> Literally done. Yeah, you, but you kept me going. And at the end of the day, I want to come and do it again, mate, this year, actually. I want to, you know, take a few Definitely, people. mate. We'd love, love to have you over there. As soon as this is over, we get you on one as soon as possible, mate. I mean, we moved it to Barcelona now, as you know. It's it about an hour up from Barcelona, so gone over there so it'll be a different experience completely but the beaches are so much beautiful over there it's the place we've got is more holistic you know what i mean it's more there's more there's more more well less going on than marbella if you like but more um more things to do more sort of activity things to do so but that but you've taught you know you've taught me about you know like we discussed before about the mind and then you obviously got me in contact with with a medium and then you know even that even that kind of you know, came to fruition, you know, I went to see, um, you know, I went to see a medium and she was amazing. You put me in contact with her and she said yeah, about, oh, Amy, someone you yeah, Amy, she said, you said something about, you know, she said, oh, there's this lady called Annie in your life. She's here. And I was like, yeah, this I don't is know mad. Annie. Yeah. I'm thinking Annie, nanny, but it just didn't come to me. And <laughs> then, and then I went to my nan's funeral, Sally, she passed and the priest so we're all here, but my nan's name was Nancy, but she was actually christened Annie, unbeknown to me. And he found that out at the funeral. She changed her name for some That's reason crazy. when she was five. No one knows why, but she's she was but she was you, christened you, Annie. Her name was Annie. And what? That's uh, mad. You said you said to your mum, didn't you? You went, "Who's Annie?" When she called out Annie, was that right? You yeah, said, and she you said, didn't have, "You didn't have an idea." Yeah, I said, actually, Who's Annie? In the funeral, what? Didn't have an, and even but even but even my mum didn't know until we actually went to the funeral. And it was on the birth certificate and whatnot. So, you know, the, this, uh, this, whole, this, no, crazy, this whole visualization mind, all what you've got people to do. And, you know, I'm very lucky, Rob, if I'm honest. I've got very good friends and family around me um, and loved ones. So I kind of, I've never gone down the depression route. I've never, I'm very lucky that I haven't because I know people that have. And it must be awful. Do yeah. you know what I mean? But, Especially in um, your game. It's, it's hard, isn't it? Of course. Cool, you know, there's people, sadly, hard, you know. I've, I've had a lot. Sorry, there's, people taking a, there's people taking their own lives, as we know, this year. Do you know what I mean? So, you know, at the end mm. of the day, I'm of kind of lucky. Of I'm just lucky that, you know, I kind of have got people that I love. I mean, also, you know, it's about finding yourself. Do you know what I mean? That's why I came on your retreat. It's kind of, you know, it's very well documented that, you know, last year was a bit of a hard year for me. And I kind of yeah. wanted to come and just... I know it sounds cliche, but to find myself, do you know, what, do you know you, what I mean? You put the effort in. You didn't. You didn't muck about. I got to give you your due. You know what I mean? I have loads of people come, but you you applied yourself from day one, very respectful, and you proper you proper put in the work. You know what I mean? You didn't miss nothing. You was there, no. grafted on everything. All the mind sessions, the food sessions, the food for thought. No, you done amazing, mate. I mean, it was a good one. That mountain was a blinder when you get to top of that mountain, and you get that view. <laughs> Just, just to fuse, man. Also, just to sit there on your how own. About, in, how in, about the water thing? Thoughts. Remember the water thing? Walking yeah, that was brilliant as well. And, that, um, that, ben, ben I, I remember saying to you, then I'm coming Quality. back here next year. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a beautiful, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a beautiful thing to see, and also it's it's pretty cool. It was like doing a tough month. You could month. be in like South America or somewhere, couldn't you? Yeah, you could. You wouldn't you could think be like South in, America or something, couldn't you? Yeah, definitely. You wouldn't think you're in Spain. Swimming through the mountains and that. Yeah, oh, it was lovely, mate. Lovely. But yeah, so anyone that don't know, I'm a retreat in Spain called the Holistic Retreat, which they can come to. Um, but it's all about, we spend the whole week working on the body. So you work on your fitness. You have your, um, 
you have your nutritionist and work it's all your foods laid out for you and uh, then we teach you about the mind from day one to the last day with your visualizations the reticular activating system law of, uh, law of vibration a little bit on quantum physics and you know it's, it's a good it's a good learning week and it's do you know it's just, it's fun and it? it's like one of them holidays i like to say dude, is that you know you um you go on holiday for a week with the boys you have a great time but you don't remember nothing because all you do is lay on the beach and get drunk sort of thing but on this holiday yeah. it's such like an adventure in it every day where we're going a day we're going to different places we're climbing a mountain we're going water sports we, you know I, I think it's um i think it's like it's like crab. it's been a, been it's a like, large slog last four years but it's been worth it mate. it's like when you said about you know, you, you knew what my hopes and dreams were. And, you know, I kind of said, you know, I really want to go back to the show that I'm known for. And like you said, but if you don't get that, you'll get something else. So if, because I used to say, God, it's, you know, Christ's sake, you know, I, I, at the time, Rob, I wasn't necessarily a believer because it's a very obvious thing to say, think positive, positive things will happen. But until you actually adapt that to your own life and you go, good God, like I, I let, you know, left the job in July last year and I've been very fortunate. Money's not been an issue in my life. I've, I've kind of got good money in the bank. But there was, there was a, a role that came in, a job that came in and it exceeded a, a price tag that I've never, I've never had for a job before. It paid me an amazing wage for the length of time really? that I did, did that show. And that's all because I went, right, this is Quite what it. I want. This is what I want. It might not be the show that I necessarily Put your want. Put on it. But put your focus on it, and then something. It's, you you might not always get that, but you'll get something. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, something is big. Yeah, or so I say you don't know what you are. You can ask for what you want, but sometimes it comes in different shapes and forms. Doesn't exactly. It? But, exactly. Um, so what we're talking about, everyone, is about like visualization. What I've been raving on about for the last two weeks is that everything gets made twice. First in the mind, and it gets created outside in reality. So you know. What we've been talking about with Dean and uh, earlier with Jake, Jake is um, Jack is that um, creating everything inside your mind. So spending like just a little bit of time in the morning visualizing your goal, visualizing your outcome in the evening, visualizing it, and just putting your focus there to start off with. Because you can't. Oh, I sounds like a sat nav. If you don't put a postcode in, it can't work. If you don't put a vision in your brain of what you want, it can't direct you. So that's the, the quickest way to explain it. But also, so, I mean, you know, everyone been... out there, just get visualizing. But also, what you were saying at the time well, as so well is that. When, when, you, when you want something, there's, there's a divine intervention on why you don't get it at that moment in time because you're not ready. You know, the, 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 the visualisation that I wanted last year didn't necessarily come back to me the way that I wanted it, but there's a reason for that because it's, it's about growth and it's about, you know, ending up where you want to be. And you, you can't always just get it that quickly. You can't dream and go... No, of course not. And sometimes you have to go... Sometimes you have to go through bad things to get into the good things. Sometimes a load of crap hits you, and you've got to go through this pain and suffering to remove all the crap out of your life, so you've got more room for the new goodness. So you know, exactly, this, this isn't. It ain't no way. Everyone thinks, oh, it's a. Way. It don't mean it's going to be easy or it's going to be fun getting there, but you will get there. But at least you know when you get there, it will be amazing. It's, it's but that's just the thing, that. and it's all. But it's also about getting out of bed every day. You know, like I'm. I'm really happy in my life. Like I'm. I, I have amazing friends, amazing family. Yeah. Um. You know, good work. And, you know, I have a great lifestyle. So what the hell have I got to complain about? You know, I'm very lucky. And I mean, I'm probably the happiest Definitely. I've been in a very long time. So it's all good. That's quality, mate. You're missing IB for this year. You've had about six times last now that, year, not you? Now that, now that. You love it. Where I'm unhappy. That's where I'm unhappy. But no, <laughs> do you know what the thing about IB for, which people don't seem to understand is because, and, you know, obviously I know you've, you've um, done some work with Wayne recently, but obviously Wayne's business partner, Tony, is my best mate. And... You know, I go out to IB for a lot. I don't, I don't do what people do. Some people might do in IB for. I go out there to spend time with friends and eat well and and live well. You know, like we've established the the Mediterranean way of life out there. You know, kind of eating late and you know eating healthy and the sun and you know I love just being out there and being around my friends. And also, I'm pleased that my friend is successful in what he's done. Like when, he, when I first met him, he had a sunbed shop yeah. that was losing money. He wasn't doing very well. And now he's earning a very, very good wage doing something that he loves. So right. I'm proud of that. And I want to be around that. I want to embrace quality. that. Do you know what I mean? Because it rubs yeah, off Yeah, that people. vibe. Yeah, that energy. Yeah. Definitely. What keeps you motivated but now? Like, what's keeping for... you motivated for the... That's a very that again, good question. Sorry? I think... That's a very good question. I think the most important thing is 
I'm very lucky, Rob, without, you know, bigging myself up here. I'm very lucky. I've, I've had a great life. You know, I've got two healthy children. Two parents are still alive. You know, what the hell have I got to moan about? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I've got money in the bank and I live well. And, and that's, you know, I don't mean that in a big heavy way. I actually mean that in a humble way, that I'm actually grateful for those things. And I think, you know, people that come into my life, whether they stay, whether they go, they teach me, they teach me a lesson, whether that's friends, loved ones, whatever. You know, they, they come in and, and life is about learning. And I think that's what I do every day, learn. Sadly, it, man. That's good. Good answer, brother. Good answer. That's what it is. It's about growth, isn't it? I mean, I say we learn more. My mid Ali said he learned more from his losses than any of his wins. And all the growth is, it, it all comes from in mistakes, isn't it? I mean, the mistakes we make in life, or I don't like to call them mistakes, but the things that we don't, don't do right, we didn't have enough education of, we make a mistake and then we look back and we learn from that. You know, we take the, I say there's no such thing as failure. There is only information. Do you know what I mean? So, but also, Rob, it's, it's, it's important to, but it's important. But it's important as well to know your, your faults as well. Like, I'm, in my own admission, I used to be very, used to be a bit lazy. You know, I, I couldn't cook. Yeah. Now I've been on cooking lessons. I've gone to a cooking school. You know, I'm, I've joined the gym before cool, all this man. happened. Weights in the garden. You know, so it's all about changing your life just just setting yourself new goals always uh, exactly mate exactly it's what i've been saying all the idea is message to show people that you've got to raise your standards whenever you see people go i just want to be content you don't because when you get content it becomes mundane you get that you get that um that moment where you feel amazing you've hit your goal but once you've hit that it starts to then become the normal and if you just stay there yeah. you're going to start going backwards again and, and be depressed and think about the past. You need to keep, as you said, raise your standards, create a new goal, create new things. You know, as, as life changes, we change. Just keep trying to experiment and keep moving to new things. Um, a lot of people's problems that I think is why a lot of the world's got depression is they don't sit down and take time out to see what they like. I've got people like, what do you like? What do you mean? I don't know what you mean. Well, I've got to work. What, what else do you like to do? They can't even answer the question. And anyone yeah. listening that can't answer that, but that's, take the time out to write your goals down and start experimenting with what you... But that's, but that's what I'm saying, Rob. You've got to use, you know, with this coronavirus, you know, people are dying out here. Do you know what I mean? It's awful. Yeah. It's horrible. It's disgusting. But you have to, you know, if you've been affected by it, you have to bereave it. And I get that. But we, but the majority of people have to leave their home at some point when this lockdown finishes and just go, you know what? We reset our batteries. We, 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 we're back out again. And it's, you've got to have learned something. Otherwise, what was the point of all this? You can't just come out and be the same person. I can't come out from, from lockdown and be the same thing I was before going in. What's the point? You know, it's about setting yourself new goals, like you said, and going out and getting it. Now, don't get me wrong. There are, like I said, there are people, including my, one of my best friends, who, like I said, lost his mum. There are people, sadly, that are the victim of coronavirus. And they probably will never, they probably will never smile again the same way they did before. But if we exactly, can pick them exactly. up, if we can help them out, if we can make them move forward, then that's, you know, we're, we're exactly. you know, there's so many people, then what this has brought out is people, if there's not a narcissistic trait to it, if it's genuine from a good place, look at the love we're seeing, people feeding the NHS, people doing this, people doing that, people, the guy, you know, you know, Captain Tom, Lay, you know, raising nearly 30 million pounds. I mean, for walking around his garden, unbelievable. So, there is amazing max of, uh, you know, amounts of bravery going on right now. And that's, you always have to look, try and look for a positive in a negative. Definitely, mate. I agree with you 100%, Dane. Great advice there. Um, but, yeah, it's... it's, it's um, I mean, I got all this, I got all this, but I got all this, Rob, from a book. I'm, I'm reading my book now and I'm telling you it. I'm quoting the book now, I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. Anyway, it's good, it's good, mate. Well, if you're, it's, it's a good book by the sounds of it anyway, if it was. But no, mate, it's, um, it's, it's good. I mean, I see you working on yourself, mate. You know, people don't realise how much you did work on yourself last year, how much you did visualise, how much you did put the graft in, you know what I mean? The, the fitness, the mindset, like, and you applied it, and, you know, you, you've been doing well, mate. You, your life's back on track, you know, been happier. And um, there's a lot to say to you, the sort of man who's sort of living the, living the, um, living the dream, if you like, living the experience. You've created it, and it's moving forward. You know? I've, um, yeah, you know, anyone I spoke to this week who's doing well, it's always because they're creating these forward things first. They're making it twice, and um, yeah. No, but you also, but you also have to. I think people. There's a lot of people that don't. I think as well to to move forward, you know, without getting deep. Um, 
you've also got to right your wrongs. You've also got to hold your hands up to where you've gone wrong in life. Yeah. And I think that's that's important as well, Rob. Do you know what I mean? To kind of hold your hands up and go, do you know what? I, I fucked up. And, yeah. you know, we all make mistakes, man, some more than others. But no one on this planet goes through life and doesn't make a mistake. It's how you adapt to it. It's exactly. how you learn from exactly. it. And that's, and that's what I hope we can all do from this situation. 100%, mate. 100%. It's, it's just the mistakes. I think mistakes are... Um... They're our friend, you know, like a lot of me, I see, him, I see him, uh, billionaires and millionaires always say, I failed my way to success. And people go, how can you fail your way to success? Because that's where they learned their information to overcome and, and learn their trade. It was from all the mistakes and what they call failure that gives them the information to, to become stronger and a knowledge for it not to happen again. And I think um, that's a good way of putting it, mate, a good way of looking at it. Um, so what's up, what's up for Dean in the next, what's your next vision, Dean? What's your next goals you got coming up for the future? Where are we going? Oh, I don't know if I should tell you. I don't know if I should tell you. Um, I, well, I think, I think it's just about, no, I think, I think it's just about, you know, be successful in the career that I've chosen. You know, I've been yeah. doing very well for the last 27 years away it's been now. So I can't, you know, I'm, there were like last year when my, when I left my job, there was a, a, a little bit of a self pity, like, you know, feeling a bit hard done by, but at the end of the day, I've been excess, successful for 27 years in the career that I've chose. That's not that's not pity. That's amazing. Do you know what I mean? So it's Definitely, it's about yeah, always yeah. being positive and and kind of you know, you know, I kind of what I want for the future is just to carry on doing what I'm doing. You know, just keep working, keep having the relationships that I've got in my life at the moment. I'm in a good place with people, and yeah, just you know. Was I'm, it hard? I'm, was it ever hard growing up on growing up on on a screen? Then did you find it hard growing up on screen? Did it yeah, have its I mean, it did. obviously it's it did. like it's a buzz as well, but it was there like a downside to that growing up on screen. People who definitely you, you had you had um you know we we you know the level like I've said before the level of what ratings we were getting at that point, you know half the country watching. And I think what happened with that is, you know when I was younger when I was fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, I you know in my you know I wasn't the best looking guy at that age. So what happened was the papers would then write about my skin. You know, every every fourteen year old, fifteen year old really has acne or spots or whatever. But I haven't had a spot since I was nineteen years old. But people still refer to the character in the past, you know, Robbie the Spotty one. It's like yeah, yeah, what, yeah. what the hell are you talking about? I haven't had a spot yeah. since I was nineteen. I'm forty two. That's like when you're wet in the bed when you've done it when you were seven, you know Exactly. I mean? <laughs> yeah. So so at that time, you know, they don't really get away with it now, but the papers were cruel then. Do you know what I mean? There was there it was it was mercenary you know it was it was ruthless it was, it a ruthless was yeah 90s mate 90s yeah, there was no no laws was there no. <laughs> and to get to get to get through that now and be at the other end and go actually you know you know we're i think we're in a good place with with when we get out of this situation i think things will will you know you know look at just what's happening with like lgbtq do you know what i mean everything's we we just live in a very different world now and it's kind of it's kind of a good time to be alive. What do you think about um, these? Like, what, I've, what I've learned is that like, a lot of these reality stars come into the game. I mean, a lot of them are committing suicide and stuff. And I don't think they've been. I don't think they're getting prepped into it. At least if you're acting, you sort of going through auditions, you're getting used to things, and you sort of the listen problem, to other actors, the, the, and you the, can the, see the dramas. But a lot of these young kids are jumping in, jumping in the deep end, getting these reality shows, going mad. But then when it when it so they're, they're liking the limelight, they're liking the. Um, all, all the money they get in and all you know all the perks and all the instagram but then when the when the, when something bad happens in their life and the, and the press put it out they don't have to, i don't think i was teaching them how to handle it i think they should have a lot more but the thing is though, Rob, you, you, you have to you know whose whose fault is that it's different if you want to be an actor but if you just want to be famous you just want to go on love island have sex on tv and you know get a million followers and yeah. get a, an endorsement deal with a clothing company if you want to do that then you have to take the rough and the smooth. I don't. Yeah. What I mean is, I don't know if it's the TV's decision to. They do what they can. They they yeah. they have. They, you know, when I did the show that I did recently, every week, and it got to a point where it was like enough now. Every week you'd have a psych test, and you know, are you how are you coping? And it kind of got to the point where I, I get some people need that. Personally, I don't because I have friends and family that I can talk to. But the show, the shows that. 
the shows that that can the shows that do that, you know, they 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 have counselors, they have people that can talk to them. But if you're picking up the phone or you're putting up an application online to go into Love Island, say, or, or a reality show, then you you know, where do, when does the responsibility stop? Not 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 be with you. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm not. Listen, obviously. You know, it's horrible. I think the agents, I mean, some of them are a bit too young and a bit wet behind the ears, and I think the agents could put a bit, I think they should put a little bit more effort into saying to them, like, it's okay, we can... Wish, we want you to get you... I want to get you on these programmes. Why, why, Rob, or you can't put it on the TV companies. They, they, they do their best. I know you saying. But it's, you know I mean? it's, it's that. It's just that thing, I think they should just be, somehow, they need to be aware that what comes with the good? You're also gonna. You can't. You can't. You can't go into that limelight. Have all the good stuff on the press, but you're gonna. You're gonna get all your all your bad stuff in. It's part of it. You know what I mean? I don't. So I think it's like so if young, you look at, understand it. If you look at something like, I don't know, the Daily Mail comments that people on on any story, anybody, whether it's about myself or about, you know, someone else in the public eye, ruthless. Like literally, every comment on the Daily Mail is negative, and that just that still shows that the be kind thing isn't working. And it's, yeah. sad, it's sad, really, because I think in America, it's different. They want you to do well. They, they, they're they picking up everyone. Uh, yeah. in England, you can, you can see that in America, can't you? You can see that. You just pick up their newspapers when you're over there. It's like, we're the best country in the world. The, you know, the, the, our football club's going to do amazing. Over here, we say we're crap. It's falling to pieces. Our football team's going to lose the World Cup. If someone made a wrong decision, they start bringing up all their footballers' personal lives. No, we're just not with. We're just not backing. We just don't back back each other. Like you could be a stranger in the street going for a run in America. They go, go on, my bro, go, bro. Yeah. You can do it. And like, just the way they are over there. I think we. In my in my opinion, if you log in to you know you put your email address into some you know any any newspaper um, comment section, you have to put your email in. You have to then you know so, you know kind of see if it's a real email and you're not a bot or robot. Yeah. To even go down that route to slag someone off, it says more about you than it does the person that you exactly. actually slag. Yeah, I was saying that to Jack Finch this afternoon that when you've got people like running you down and stuff and a lot of trolls and stuff, I said, they're jealous. They, you can only look up at someone you're jealous of. You can't look down at them. You've only, you can only get jealous if you re they show you something better than what you are. There's something that, you're, that you ain't got or you think you could have. And, you know, it's only jealousy. So you've got to take it as a compliment. Do you know what I mean? If someone's, yeah, of course. If someone's being... Um, jealous then it's just a compliment mate you know what i mean but this but this is the thing you know i might watch a film tonight and go oh my god rob it was the best film i've ever seen you might watch it and go mate it's awful it's it's your opinion everyone's entitled to their own opinion do you know what i mean so i get it but sometimes the negativity of people them trolls i just i like i said it says more about them and how they've been brought up because we could you shouldn't always say what you see or feel sometimes keep it to yourself and i, I have this you know saying it's just it's nice to be nice it's actually nice to be nice it is yeah do you know what i mean it, it ain't so hard, to, put, is it, to be nice but you know what i like not. I mean, when you go for a walk in the, what i've noticed throughout this time which is a weird time is that when you go for a walk everyone smiles at each other they move out your way but everyone's like it just seems like people are being nicer to each other out right there and i yeah. think no matter where you come from in the world what country you're from where you're born we're all in the same. We're all in the same bloody boat. Do you know what I mean? We're all in the same boat. We're all we're all fighting this corona, so it don't matter anymore what you're really from. But that's the thing, but that's like, the thing right, you know, We're all part of the human race. Do you know what I mean? But this is the thing, you know. We're 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 becoming. I hope and I hope it's not the case. But you know, sometimes you can be desensitized to it all because you know you're hearing every day seven hundred people dying, eight hundred people dying. You know, one person dying is bad. Let alone eight hundred, so and that's a day. Yeah. So this this virus is wiping people out. It's horrible. It's you know there's no there's there's nothing to say. Because I'm saying, you know, like when we all get this corona's over, we can all go out and smile again. There are people that will never smile again because they've lost their siblings, loved ones, mothers, my, aunties. You know. I don't know my my he's like my I call him my uncle and I call him my cousin, but my, he's my dad's best <coughs> mate growing up. He's just he just passed away a couple of weeks ago of the coronavirus and you know it's horrible because no one could go and see him you couldn't go and say goodbye he was in there three weeks before he passed they could only see him say the goodbyes on the camera his other boys in america they could only do it all through like social you know, through 
the internet. And, you know, the funeral, I had to sit and watch it on, on the, um, I mean, it's, I'm, it's good what they're doing, being able to put a stream in, that's a good thing, but at least we can yeah. still feel that we're part of it and be there and watch and support. But, you know, the, you know, uh, his wife and the kids and the grandsons, that's all that was at the funeral. And, um, but yeah, it's the thing. Said, though, that's it's some strange, but we, we think it's sad. We were still there morning with them watching it live, but my mates, my cousin said, my cousin mate said that, you know, it's quite nice in a way because I could just look after my mum. I didn't have to worry about anyone yeah. else. I, it's weird, isn't it? How you see it as a bad exactly. thing. Actually, there's also positives in there. It's, you know. But this is the thing I've got. I've got, you know, one of my good friends, like I said, one of my best mates, his mum's passed and the funeral's Tuesday and he's allowed eight people. And, you know, it's, it's an awful time. Like, it's, you know, I don't know. What do you say to someone who's just lost their mother? I don't know what you say. Because let me tell you, if I lost my mum, I wouldn't, yeah. be able, I wouldn't be able to get out of bed for months, mate. I wouldn't be able to get out of bed because it's, it's one of the closest people to me. So I, I sympathise with every single person. Also, Rob, um, I'm noticing questions are coming up from this live. I've never done live before. So I just want to apologise to everyone if we're not answering yeah, yeah. questions because I don't know how this works. So, yeah. sorry. Yeah, sometimes I turn them off sometimes. Like, but you've got questions. When you host it, you get questions yourself. That I can answer, but sometimes like silicon, so I can turn them off. Sometimes they get so many you can't. That you're not focused. Um, just a, but there's no, like no, a little question box. Like I've got, I've got a question here for you. Uh, let's have a look. I've got a few questions coming. Do you enjoy being a face in the public? I oh, yeah. do. You enjoy being a face no. in the public? Yeah, I think that's what it means. It's a very good question. I think. Do you enjoy being you know, a face? Like, do you know what? I'm gonna. You know, you have to. People have to be honest. Yeah, it's a great. It's a great, it's a great feeling, you know, when you're successful in, in you know, what you've chosen yeah. to be recognised is a very unusual thing, but I've put up with it for so long now, so it's just part and parcel of life. But yeah, that's it's just, nice, it's, you know, it's, it's, but it's nice because, you know, if they know you, and th then you're doing something right. So it's, it's a nice, you know, it's a nice feeling. Like I said, when people are nice, you're nice back. It's, it's, it's an open hinder you, you know, if you're, if you're, I don't know, if you're out with your loved ones and you're having a nice meal and then someone comes up and, you know, so there are... Tommy Mallet's on the firm saying gaffer, look. Want to get you on here, Tom? Love Tommy. Tommy Mallet saying the gaffer. <laughs> but yeah, yeah mate, mate, listen, but, um, Tom, Tommy, 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 Tommy's about, one of them people. Sort of I love Tommy. He's one of them, he's one of them people I mean, that he's I've just... Never met he's him, all, no, what? mate, he's always smiling. He's always smiling. He's the yeah. life and soul of the party. Love you, brother. It'd be good to get on here because he's another visionary. I love all these, all these talks about being visionaries, being look, look, visualizations. Look I mean, all I've seen him speak about is how he creates in the future. And, but that's what I'm saying. Know, look at him. Like but, in his own, but, in his, but in his own admission, Rob, you know, he came from, you know, I believe like a, a, a kind of growing up in a council environment. And now look at him. He's, he's, his business like me, with the bro, trainers. Like me. Smashing it. Exactly. Yeah, exactly like quality, him. mate. And he's, and what I've seen of me, I'm dyslexic, he's dyslexic. We, we know now that um, if you're dyslexic, the new studies of the mind are showing that you have ADHD as well. So, you know, we, we might not even know he's got it, I don't know. But if you're dyslexic, no. you're dyspraxic if you have ADHD. Um, so when I've listened to his thoughts, you know, people think you don't amount to nothing. It's me, man. I grew up in South London, Bermondsey. You know, I left school at 14. I'm dyslexic, ADHD, and I'm beating therapists around the world live on camera. Got me a retreat out in yeah. Spain, best retreat in the, in, in the country, you know what I mean, like in, in Europe. So, you know, it shows you. You learn how to use that visionary process. And I think being dyslexic and not being academic teaches you how to like, look around angles, look at different... You have to paint different pictures than someone else will, you know what I mean? So exactly. I think being like, having ADHD and dyslexic is my fucking blessing, do you know what I mean? It's, um, and it is for uh, uh, most people, as long as you learn how to use it. Cause, because I say you can't focus, but actually when you do start to focus, you hyper-focus. So you can't focus on something you can't like, you're not interested in. So at school, the teacher could be talking to me and I wouldn't hear, if, you know, again, one ear. I could be wanting to learn, but again, one ear, like, what did I just say? I ain't got fucking clue. But when it comes to saying yeah. I enjoy it, I hyper focus things, do you know what I mean? Like, and um, that's the ADHD thing. So if you can focus on something that you want as if you've already got it, then you definitely, it's people's, it's people's benefit to have ADHD. They've just got to learn about it, learn how to run the, run the process, and you're going to be more successful than the people that can focus because you can hyper focus. That means you end up becoming obsessed with the focus. You can't stop thinking about it. You wake up thinking about it. You go to sleep thinking, and you become obsessed. And I think, so it, it can be, or well, it is, their gift. But 
we only get t told to use in an academic way. And because we can't focus on things that don't mean nothing in our art or don't interest us, they say that we can't focus. You're thick, you're stupid. Like, no, I'm just fucking not interested in what you've got to tell me. But if you want to talk about something I'm interested yeah. in, like boxing or golf or, or, or the mind or, you know, something creative, then I'm there, mate. You ain't going to get no more attention than anyone. But if you're talking about maths and geography and oh, I don't give a shit about it, then I can try to learn. I don't want to be rude. I can try, but it ain't going in. It's just not, it's not absorbing. Do you know what I mean? But, um, no, of course. But um, yeah, so everyone keep visualising, keep moving forward, mate. Keep going forward to everyone. Um, anyone with ADHD, dyslexic out there, definitely start focusing on your visions. But um, I don't want to keep you too long, mate. You've, done, you've gone over than what you said. I know that you had things on, so I really appreciate you coming on, brother. And I can't Thank wait to have you back to the retreat again, Dean, mate. We had a good laugh last time, son. Um, and thank you very Listen, much, that, mate. That, you're, that, you're a proper part of part of Britain now, part of British British history, mate. We've all grew up with you, so I appreciate your time, mate. And you're always a gentleman. Yeah. You're always respectful, always polite. You know, can't, I can't um, couldn't wish for a better new pal to have from last year. Do you know what I mean? So thank you very much, Dean, for being there, thank mate. You, and um, appreciate. It. God bless you, son. Speak to you soon. Take yeah, care, my very friend. Soon. Take it easy, Ciao, fella. Bye, bye mate. Is it going off?